Welcome everyone to the third of the Ricci Nomi New York City guest lectures. Uh, welcome back to everyone who's been to one before. Um, for anyone who hasn't, welcome. This is hopefully going to be fun and educational. Um, same as last week, in the interest of this being a great learning experience for everyone, we're just gonna start by laying out some guidelines for the lecture. So everyone is not going to be on server mute this week. Unlike last week, you remember the mods had you muted. Uh, Jay was interested in having a very discussion style lecture. So instead, you're going to be managing your own mute and we're asking you to stay on mute unless you'd like to chime in and contribute to a question or unless Jay calls on you specifically to answer a question. Now you can see in the lecture participation channel that we now have a bot that the excellent Moku has made to facilitate Jay calling on people. You can see that in lecture participation, you can type in the exclamation point join to be added to a list to be called on in a more cold call kind of way. You can always leave at any time by typing leave, and then Jay will be able to pick someone to answer in the event that no one unmutes themselves to chime in and, and contribute. So you won't be cold called unless you're from that list, so don't worry about that. Um, just think about it like a conference call in terms of your own mute. If you're not talking, please keep yourself on mute because as you know, these are recorded to put on YouTube later so that other people can enjoy the content. Um, so in the interest of that being a very understandable experience for the people watching, having yourself on mute to minimize that background noise is definitely appreciated. As always, um, with our Ricci Nomi behavior guidelines, there will be absolutely no hateful or rude comments tolerated, either in voice or in chat. We are all friends here. I don't expect to have a problem with it. Without any further ado, that's all the technical stuff. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna introduce our lecturer tonight, who is Jay. So Jay is here from Melbourne and the Australian Ricci Mahjong Association, which is very exciting. He has been playing for one and a half years, which is terrifying that he's this good already. And he runs the ARMA broadcast with his friend SBT on Saturday and Sunday nights. So those are some fun facts about Jay. I hope we're all very excited to start learning about when we should call Ricci and when we should open our hands. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Jay now. Hello, hello. Thank you for that, Claire. I'm very excited to, to be talking about this. And um, yeah, so I wanna reiterate a point before and that this is gonna be less, uh, less like last week's um, Butane when, when they did the lecture, they were talking a lot, like they had a lot more like theory around more it. Like and theory so around it, more, and so it was a lot more uh, it was a lot more lecture based style. Uh, it was a lot more. Uh, um, sorry. Um, and like this one, I want to be more of a discussion of ideas because I feel like the the best way you can decide when you reach you or when you open is uh, based on your mentality. So what what do you consider the pros and cons at the time? And I'll elaborate that as I go on. So, uh, first things first is the pros and cons of Ricci. Yes, I know, I know. This, all of this stuff is fairly like stuff you probably already know. But it is worth recapping just very quickly so that we can have a fresh reminder of them um, as we go into the situation. So the pros is obviously the pros of Ricci is it gives either Yaku or N plus one Han to your hand and it gives you access to Urdara, whereas the cons are it locks in your hand and you do have to throw a thousand points in the middle, which does matter sometimes. The thing that I will say depends, so it is both good and bad, really depends on where you're at, is that you let everyone know you're in Tempai. Uh, tempai being that you have a ready hand and that you can win. So sometimes you actually do want to prey on that fear factor and sometimes you don't. It will really depend on um, the situation in which you're presented. And that's well, the thing I want to talk about next is that literally everything is context dependent. So when you hear someone say like this is a textbook Ricci case, very often you will actually not run into very many textbook cases because the way for me that I define a textbook case is a point situation, which means that everyone is fairly close in terms of points. Early in the Hanchan, which means that uh, the points you have now are more of a collection of points for a general collection of points rather than for positional play or for situational dependence later. Um, and yeah, and then so like in those very specific scenarios, you, you take this because it is maybe higher expected value or something like that. But that's not really something you can always rely on. Those kinds of situations shockingly don't come up that often. Like you will, 
you have to look at the board state. You have to look at the points to decide whether you want to reach or open because I feel like those are the most important places to decide. You need to decide, you know, your exposure to um, the various pros and cons. So as we were mentioning before, you know, like um, this pros and cons list, sure, maybe I could say, you know, if you fill in two pros and one con and have less, less than or equal to one con, then you must reach it. But sometimes things in each of those particular uh, cases will be important enough that it doesn't actually matter about any of the other cons. Sometimes, um, uh, we'll, we'll go through examples, but like as, as a quick example, say you're in South 4 and you are 10,000 points ahead and you know you have a good weight. Well, the con of locking in your hand and throwing 1,000 points doesn't actually matter uh, compared to the pro of giving your hand Yaku and moving along the hand. So like that's only like one prod, but there's only one pro, and but the, both the cons still technically apply. So I, I don't believe in t in telling you guys and sort of what I would feel like lying to your face and saying, oh, you know, you have to fulfill a certain criteria, and then everything really depends on the board, and it's for you to self evaluate whether or not something is important enough to you to be able to justify the decision. So. I want to bring up the first case. So, in this scenario, you have time to uh, to, to to use the uh, the button. All right, Nemi, you're up. Oh, so just real today because <laughs> unmuting my mic made yep, me yep, okay, okay. close the window. So, yep. what do you think of this scenario? So it's an early game. We're currently in the lead. Getting the Tenpai would be ma would mean waiting on the seven so without any Yaku. Although in this case we st and even we don't really have a good chance to uh, improve unless we're lucky and we get the five so and then we can get a Pinfu. So in this case, I would probably call Richie also for the um, just the fact that an early dealer Richie is kind of scary and makes people not push their hand too much. It would mean um, um, hoping for a sumo, mm -hmm. but then again, most dealer Richie you have to hope for a sumo. Um, is there any consideration to seven pin or four pin? Or even like a six pin. Oh, so you, yeah, just not taking the uh, the tempi in this case. Yes. I guess it could happen. Mm -hmm. I'm. I mean, I'm the I'm the kind of person that does not like not taking the tempi, especially if I'm in the lead and uh, it's still early in the game. So I would say that literally, what am I doing here? Because that was a brilliant answer. You're you're completely right. So like like what Nimi said was precisely the point of this this slide was um yes there are upgrade paths. So you could so um, generally speaking, if you're not taking the tempi, you should cut a tile that makes your ishanten or one shanten the best possible. So if you cut the uh, so if you're not taking the tempi, you cut the eight so. However, you're hoping for a five so a four pin or a 6-pin. 7-pin is an upgrade, however, if you look around, there's only one 6-pin left, so it is a value upgrade waiting on the last 6-pin, which is horribly dead. Whereas, Nemi, what Nemi said about, essentially, it was perfect. It was an absolutely perfect answer. It was that uh, you, first of all, you are in the lead, and you are dealer. But this comes back to the point we are mentioning before, where an advantage of Ricci is people you're in tempi in this particular case you actually want to tell people you're in tempi because you're trying to drive fear into them you're trying to tell them i have a hand and now you guys have to adapt your play style and this is something that i want to talk about in terms of like a, a ten home meta it's that uh an chan so uh inside weights or edge weights or really just weights that aren't particularly good with one Dora are extremely powerful because 
of the fact that you're telling everyone you're in Tenpai, so you're trying to scare them from progressing their hand. But so I already know that like one of the arguments against could be, well, what happens if I get chased? Then I'm stuck with a bad weight versus the other person. But then that becomes a form of bias because the downside of not taking the Ricci is what if I just don't draw into Tenpai and someone else reaches beforehand and I'm just stuck in Ishan Ten. Every action you take has a has a give and a a give. So if it it will not always be clean. It, you don't always get a scenario where well you take this and you know this is the cleanest possible option and there is no downside ever. You will always run into downsides. But in terms of Tenho Meta, I want to bring to you guys the idea that the first Ricci is extremely powerful. Because you're telling everyone you're in Tenpai, you're going to scare them away from the hand more often than not. And, a, and an inside weight with one Dora is actually a lot more valued than you expect, because if you can sumo it and hit an Ura, it goes up to Manga. Which, yes, that is relying on two things that happen to you. One, that you sumo it, two, that you hit Manga. But if you've reached, you're stopping other people from progressing their hand. Because if they have respect for Ricci, which they should if they're playing this game, then they will try to at least go around, giving yourself more time. So sumoing is not as horrible as it seems. And, you know, you're turning a hand which inherently does not normally have a lot of value into a, a mangan, which is a lot, a lot of value. So I, I wanted to bring it up in terms of um, it is tempting to look at this and say, well, I want more upgrade options. But as literally, as, as Nemi said before, like all those plus sides and the early Ricci is exactly why you should take these kinds of Ricci's. So I wanted to show you guys more examples. So something like this as well. So it doesn't have to be a Dora. It can just be plus one heart. So, yeah. So in this case, I'm dealer, Ricci, Hanyao, same, same deal. Early game. Two people have opened as well. So um, they have more exposure of just dealing into me if they really decide that they want to push. But I'm not thinking about that. I just want to dig in on this hand and say, you know what? Uh, inside weight door ones are valuable enough. Um, may I ask a question? Of course. Um, so uh, I guess one thing that I'm always unsure of within like these particular type of cases, I guess especially if I'm not dealer, is I'm always very nervous when it's a, like just one Yaku as opposed to the Dora because then getting um, like chased or something uh, always seems a lot more scary to me. And so um, I'm not sure, maybe it's like a, a later thing, maybe it's if you're not in um, a dealer, but I'm wondering if your opinions of like how much I should care uh, when I just don't see any Dora on the board or in my hand about reaching. You exactly put it on the, you put the, you, you, you talked about it perfectly. It's that it depends on how late you are into the game. So when you're in the first row, everyone has dealt, everyone has obviously dealt 13 tiles, right? But, so that means that there is a higher chance that some Dora are in the wall if they have not yet been discarded. But the later you go and the less Dora you see, the more likely that those Dora are just in somebody else's hand. So... Take this hand, for instance, right? It's a very much a very instant Ricci. Because I am in the first row, and the chances of them having the Dora is a lot lower because it could just be in the wall. But let's say I am 12 turns later, and I still see no Dora. Then I reasonably have, you know, I'm reasonably frightened because this is Arc of Fives as well. So there are seven Dora. So you're, you're perfectly, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. It depends on how late you are into the game and your ability to run. Because in this case, I do actually have Yaku, so I can choose to stay safer, try to run someone off cheap, move the, move the hands on forward, and if I draw a Dora, say, and the, the board state looks really terrifying, I do just have a choice to fold. So that, that's, a, that's a really good point that you brought up. It does depend on how late you are. But the early reaches, so something in like the first, if I were to give a broad metric eight discards, uh, is very, very powerful even if you don't see any Dora, because it is early enough to scare people away. But thank yes, you. Thank you. That was, a, that was a really, really good question. And um, just, just for sanity checking's sake, just to let you guys know that I'm not throwing some hot garbage at you, here are horror players taking uh, away Dora 1 reaches. 
So in this case, you see that the player uh, did rejected the chance for Itsu. So rejected even just holding out their hand and hoping for a Pinfu upgrade or an Itsu upgrade, despite it being turn two for the uh, sharper in this case, Dora One Ricci, because. Early Reaches are extremely powerful. And in fact, if you look at this case, look at your left player. They cut two white dragons from in the middle of their hand. You killed all of their progress. They had to cut those white dragons because they didn't have a choice. And that is exactly what this early Reachy does. It stops people from progressing their hand comfortably. They normally have to go around. And if they're going around, they're going slower. Sometimes, I, will have to, I have to remind you guys that sometimes you will get bodied because someone has a valuable enough hand that they will screw you. And that is a very unfortunate case. But more often than not, in the long run, in a thousand hands, this is an extremely powerful move because you will win far, far more often. And uh, this one is not exactly relevant, actually, because um, there's two Dora, so you have to take the Richie anyways. But it was more just... Uh, talking about how you like waiting for upgrades is not as good as you think it is. It like it in the end have giving your hand Yaku and more importantly being the first Richie is extremely powerful. So um, yeah, so Kanchan uh, so Kanchan or awkward wait plus one hand is just a very very good hand. So but there is cases where that does not exactly apply. And this will not apply when your hand has so many upgrade options that you can reasonably get into Tempai again for a better hand very soon. So what do I mean by very soon? Well, in order for you to get back into Tempai very soon, you will want a lot of tiles that can improve your hand and get you back into Tempai. So the general metric that I have been using is 20 plus tiles. I don't know what the math is on that. I just read it in a book once. <laughs> but um, it, but it's a good sort of blanket statement. However, as in all cases, this is not always relevant. Sometimes you, you will get into cases where you have to take the Ricci. You will get into the cases where you can't take these Ricci's because your hand is not valuable enough. Everything is context dependent. But if I can give you a blanket metric, if I can give you that flat point situation, third turn discard, stuff try to count out the 20 tiles so i will i'm going to give you an example of of a hand that has roughly 20 tiles of improvement so this one i'm actually going to pick somebody so let's see hey butane <laughs> okay, tell me what my upgrades are Hello, Butane? <laughs> I myself. I'm sorry. Oh, good, oh, good. Um, so if you reject the 10 pod, you would probably cut the 1 pin. Cutting the 1 pin, you're, the, the upgrades that you're really looking for are um, 4 tiles of the 2 mod, 4 tiles of the 5 mod. I guess like the remaining one of the remaining 3 tiles of 3 mod isn't the end of the world. Um, five a uh, five pin. There are four tiles that will give you a uh, forty ten summon chan, which is good enough. There's um four tiles of um the seven pin, and then three tiles of the six pin again aren't the end of the world. Um, and then in Sozu you have a lot of upgrade paths. You have um hmm. Because what would you be happy with in Sozu? Five so uh. Not much else, I think. I think um, in the Sozu, yeah. you're looking for reverse okay. upgrades. So something like if you draw it, then your Ishan 10 becomes even wider. Kind of. Okay, so if you're going to count, like, if you're going to count Ishan 10 to Ishan 10 upgrades, then pretty much I'd be happy drawing something else in Sozu, whatever it may be. Yep. Perfect. But uh, yep. You, you're looking at what around twenty-five-ish to thirty tiles of upgrades. That's one. That's yeah, like you know one one fourth of the remaining wall. Yep. Perfect. Yep. 
So, um, yep, just as Butane says, we are waiting for, I think, there's only two two months, but, you know, it's all right. So two here plus three three months, because then you end up with an n tot weight. So an n tot weight is when you have this kind of six, seven, eight, eight, eight shape, three, three shape, and then you, wait, you end up waiting for three or five or eight. So you have like two plus three plus four, because you have four, four months left plus the four five months, which is granted not a great upgrade, but it is turns your hand from reach Dora 1 to reach Tanyao Dora 1, which is a, a definite improvement, uh, plus the six pin for the same reason as Drona 3 Man, plus the five pin, as Butane said, because uh, free 10 Sun Chan is okay. It's not great, but it is okay. And the seven pin, which roughly adds up to, what, two plus three plus four plus four. That's like 11, 13... Uh, 16, 20, yeah, so you have about 25 tiles, perfectly, as Butane said. So this is an example of it. And another example of it, and this one is horrendously cruel, so um, I, I say good luck to whoever has to do this one, and uh, I, I'll just laugh from my position, is this hand. So I'm going to let the dice pick. Hey, Moku, what are all the upgrades if I don't take um, the tempo? no. Oh, hold on, let me... Here, here we go. Uh, let's see. Okay, so upgrades to sand. So we're not going to discard the uh, three or six mod. Yes, here. Um, I guess we're hoping for uh, a two mon or a seven mon here. Um, I, I guess we're assuming we're going to drop the. Would be the best tile to drop. So I guess we can get a Tanya and we can get a Sanshoku out of dropping the, uh, what is it, nine so here. Perfect. And that's probably what we're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got the, uh, the two mon is probably most preferable. So, uh, there, but there's four of those. Um, the seven also gives us a good rate. There's four of those. Um, the, the six uh, for the Sozu gives that. There's one, two, three, four of those. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else. Um, if we draw the 8, then we can have a 3-6 uh, weight, which I guess um, is technically not better, but that it still gets us Tanya, so that improves our hand, so that is another 2 tiles. Um, what else? Uh, I guess technically we can start getting that Infu Tanya as well if we get uh, another 5-mon, uh, which is another 3 tiles, or if we get a uh, four mon, which is another three tiles, and now we're hit, now we're at twenty. So uh, I guess I don't have to keep yep. counting. We're at least at twenty now. Yeah, yep. and that all gets us Tanya at the very least. Sometimes Sanshoku and sometimes Binfu. Yeah, exactly. And like even on the the seven so side, if you draw another seven so, you upgrade to a Tanya Sharpo. If you draw six so, you have Tanya Pinfu. So you can see here that this hand has so much potential to improve that you don't have to take that Kanchan Dora 1. And like, it, Kanchan Dora 1, first Riki, is powerful. But if you have hands that have roughly 20 or more tiles that upgrade you, you can reject it. And so I would say that those are the scenarios. But if you have less than, if you have much less than that, even if it's something like maybe potentially upgrading to Sanshoku, I would still say that the current Tenho meta says that you should take the first Ritchie because the first Ritchie is just so powerful. Much more powerful than waiting. So, uh, now we're going to move on to the general example section. So, this is where the biggest form of discussion is going to come. So, I, as the pros and cons of what I said earlier, um, I, want to, I want to bring this question up to you guys because I feel like these examples are just examples of how sometimes a pro uh, greatly outweighs a con. Or sometimes the con is so dire that even if you have two pros, it's just not enough. And so this is so this is where we so this is where I'll pick the most people. And remember guys, like I it's this is a purely like this is a, like a workshop. It's like a discussion based thing. I want to talk about stuff and y you are free to disagree with me. Like I'm not going to say that I have literally the best idea, but I think the most important idea is the exchange of idea of, of concepts and of, you know, danger lookings that kind of stuff. So first example, uh, yes, I'm going to pick. Hey, I'm the gamer. So 
in this scenario, what do you think? So like, just tell me your, your broad looking at the scenario, looking at the points, looking at the open board positions. What, what do you think of what I've done in a, in a completely honest way? Uh, so looking at the, the board state, so we're in South 4. Um, you're 4,200 points away from first uh, with your uh, Shimocha. looks like going for a, a Chanta hand that's more than likely um, going to be Tenpai there unless uh, some battle lock on their side. Um, I like that you waited on the 1-4 on the or so uh, because it does trap. Um, it does it does trap Shimucha and Kamicha because um, they've already discarded that, so they might think it's already a safe tile, especially if they're trying to defend against Shimocha. Um, with that, um, now as far as um, not declaring reach here, so let's see, you have uh, Akadora, Tudor, Tanya, uh, so that's three, three Han. 30, which is 3,900, so if you sumo that, that should leap you into first, uh, mm -hmm. rough calculation. So mm -hmm. you don't really need the extra points from the Ricci here to, to take first. So you're probably better off just to go Dama and um, to hit the one four so. Uh, you have five tiles left in the wall or in someone's hands, but again, seeing that the one so and the four so has been discarded, it's likely those tiles are going to come out if they draw it. Um, so I think the, the correct move was to go Dama on this hand. Um, as far as, and, and if you look at it too, um, in potential upgrades, you're already at Tanyao. Um, you don't really have much a, a reasonable possibility for Sanchoku here. Um, yeah, you could get another door, but it's all, it's all extra at this point. You have enough to win the hand. I would actually say that um, the big danger is, as you've said, even if the one so comes out, if either the player opposite me or the player to the left of me cuts it, I don't have enough value. So oh, I lose correct. an opportunity to move on. Yes, if I do get the four so, then I'm, you know, easy breezy, right? But yeah. the one so now becomes perilous by me choosing to take the Dharma because, uh, you know, if, if the could opposite player... Or the yeah, but, well, n not even that. It's just I just can't take the win. And I think something mm -hmm. else that is worth mentioning is that the last place is the dealer. So it means that if they don't need the one so, even if I have reached, they are forced to cut it. Because gotcha. in a ten host setting, last is death. So and like even oh, absolutely. In even in like a tournament setting, like if they don't draw the the it, like, you know, unless they feel like they're going to deal into a massive hand, they're so close to third place that they might just try for it anyways. So I am of the belief that my action here was a complete mistake because I don't really care about what the player to my right does, right? They have so few tiles that whether I reach you or whether I Dharma, they'll probably throw in anyways because they're going to try and mm. win the hand before I do. But I need to enable the possibility of winning off the player opposite me. And if I do not declare Ricci, I lose that opportunity. Yeah, looking at it now, I agree with you. Um, for some reason, it, it didn't uh, parents so of winning off the one, so it wouldn't be enough to, to lap to get the first. So I absolutely agree with you in that. Yeah, then you, you declare Ricci there, 100%. Yep. Uh, yes, and so yeah, thank you. Thank you for... Um, Talking, but yeah, you were you were right. Like you know, Forso is the 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 upgrade, right? So like, it doesn't actually matter if I hit the Forso, but because of the advantages of being able to hit the one so, this is a complete mistake from me. Or, like you know, I'm not going to sit here and illusion you guys that I I'm I'm I'm, I'm mistake proof because I'm just not right. I I definitely made this mistake, but um, it was worth talking about because this is where the pros of plus one Han greatly 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 outweigh any other con. Like, first place is within sight, get that extra Han so I can win off the Desperate Dealer, you know. Like, any other cons literally don't matter to me at this point. First is very, very aggressively in front of me. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, next scenario. Uh, let's go. I love this uh, lecture bot, by the way. It makes it so, it makes, this is exactly what I wanted. Banak! Banak. What do you think? That's me. 
All right, so let me just analyze this situation. So right now you have this, this, and that. Uh, okay, so basically, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Eh? Well, <clears throat> you you can take uh, you could you could potentially take the uh, the tenpai by throwing out the five pin or the six man, but here uh, I see that there are a lot of uh, nine mans that are out, so maybe it's not uh, uh, maybe you do, you don't want to wait on six and nine. Uh, let, let me just see. And yeah, you're uh, you're in South Three behind the uh, West player. So yeah, I think in this situation, let, let me just check. Mm. You you still have the possibility to uh, to stay uh, uh, <coughs> to stay defensive on that play as well. It's not uh, it's not a, a given that you'll want to uh, to reach right here, even though you're getting close to the end, uh, because if you cut the six, uh, either the six man or the five uh, pin in that situation, it can get pretty dangerous against uh, pretty much any player at that point, and especially from uh, the player in in front of you, who seems to have a, a pretty ag aggressive Tanya one at that point. Uh, but still, you could want to to keep that ten by on that. That's pretty uh, <laughs> pretty pretty hard to answer. I think I would I might drop the one pin on that. But I I would also consider to drop the six man, but just stay a uh, ten by at that point. Not necessarily uh, the Clarici because we're so close to uh, the end of the hand. But I think he, either way is uh, a possibility here. So, um, what are your thoughts on... First of all, um, the, the White Dragon is the Dora. So, I've immediately lost three of my very dangerous tiles because, yeah. you know, they, they've already been cut. So, that's a... That's like a it's almost like a hand cheap knock. Right, so like you know, every hand here is a lot less value on average than they would be if you know someone had. If I could see no white dragons, especially for very open Tanya reasons. But the big thing I wanted to bring up is uh, going into South Four in first place. So you are you are completely correct. The six yeah. man is hella dangerous right now. The three six months uh, CG yeah. is very very exposed, mm. but. If I can pass the six month, big if, big if, of course, big if. But if I can pass the six month, I put myself and I reach it. How vulnerable do each of these hands look to you? Just give me your opinion. Oh, the the player in front of you is absolutely vulnerable at that point. Uh, on on both sides of you, well, they're. Uh, I I guess they're kind of vulnerable. They might be close to Tempai, but uh, by uh, by going for a Ricci, you're definitely uh, uh, making them want to uh, to fold if they're not close enough because they're going to be close to uh, 1,000 points, maybe two hands, right? Because they're pretty much all in that kind of uh, that kind of uh, Tanyao situation. So yeah, that could be a, a valid, uh, a valid play to also uh, reach on the six man on that point. And even though you, you might not uh, get the win on two or, or five ten, it's still possible that you'll get uh, into tempai and everybody else does not. So that's another possibility here. Exactly what you said. I have no idea what the exposure is of my player to my left or the player to my right. I, I'm just not good enough at reading their pawns to be able to tell. But the, the player opposite you, as you perfectly told me, has four tiles left. 
So they're really vulnerable to dealing into my hand. Yep. Of course, this is hingent on passing through the six month. However, if I recall this game correctly, if you count the points in the middle, it all adds up to 30k, which means this is not a Tenho game. So it's not a Tenho ladder game. This is a tournament, which means that first place actually has even more precedence than coming last place. Yeah. So because of that, I would I personally decided to reach you on the six month, simply because... Yes, the six month is dangerous, and yes, I could deal it in. But if I if I recall this game correctly, mm-hmm. on the top right, someone can correct me. I don't think there's any Akka in this game. So immediately, everyone's hands around me have capped to one thousand points. Probably, it's yeah, hard it's, to yeah, imagine how their hand is not not more than two thousand points. I guess if I see some weird Sanshaku stuff, it's it's hard for me to imagine how that would be the case. So, my exposure is, deal the 6-man, deal in 1,000, move to South 4, or maybe South 3 if I deal into the dealer, but I'm still basically in the same position I was in before. But if I reach you, and it passes, everyone is so, also no, everyone, the player opposite me is so vulnerable, they may have to push their hand anyways. And if they do, and I can win this 1,600 point hand, I become first in South 4. And being first in South, and being a close second in South 4, and being a close first in South 4 are two polarizing positions. Because it, it, you're just, you, you lose so much exposure. You remove the uh, ability, if you win a big enough hand, so say I hit Ura, I hit their putts, you remove the ability for the player to your left maybe to go for a cheaper hand. Maybe you allow the player to your right to sumo a small hand, and you still be in first place. Being in first place in general in this kind of tournament setting is so valuable that I was willing to risk the danger on the six month. I'm okay. So for 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 all intents and purposes, I am not going to tell you guys that six month is safe here. It's just not safe at all. But I think with the relative risk of the positions, it is worth trying to push through this hand and say, you know what, the 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 cap on everything is so much uh, uh, so much scarier oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, the cap is so much not scary it is so much lower that it is worth taking the risk but yeah thank you Loic that was that was a perfect answer thank no you. problem and as we say in French uh, you don't make uh, an omelette without breaking some eggs <laughs> yes all right I've actually forgotten which order all these examples are so yeah this one. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be spicy Lou, Lou, come on to the stage. Hello. Hey. Yes. Hello. Okay. Um. So me... this this situation. What do you think? Just tell me all your thoughts. Let me what see. Situation, last place and situation. Everything. First thing I realize is that last place dealer is Enrici. Red fives are on. And I see only one door on the entire table, and it's in my hand. Yes. So, what do you think... So, what are my options here? What do you think my options are? You have... Well, your first option is obviously Ricci, but... Given those, I'm not a good talker. No, 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 it's okay. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. It's like um, it, this is just a discussion of ideas. Don't worry about it. So I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah. just purely curious to see hear your mindset. So you're all right. First option is to reach you. Yeah, it would yeah, be yeah. on an eight two as well, which is nice suji. It, it's a nice suji. The dealers firstly discarded a seven so early on, which means it's probably safer than. It's it's probably a nice safe suji. Nice in the yeah, first so that's place. That's a very good read. Um, however, the dealer is all, it's also the, a dealer, Ricci, and again, you cannot see any door whatsoever. You are the one at the table who has the least incentive to push, given you're in first place. And you have plenty of safe tiles to make it to the end. Well, not, not guaranteed to make it to the end, but you're probably going to make it to the end, given the number of safe tiles in your hand if you did decide to bail. I'm going to assume... Yep, sir. I'm going to assume this is a 10-hole game based on the scores added 
adding up to 100,000 instead of 120,000, yes. which means you want to avoid less more than focus on trying to secure a high first. Yes. Which means that this hand would probably just be a solid bail starting from the Probably the 6 mod is the best idea, but the 1 pin has an argument. Because the 6 mod could be more dangerous later, if you need to bail on it. But you can get back into 10 pi for real Koku if you start with the 1 pins first more easily. Is my thought on Do you... it. Yeah, no, that's, that's, really, that's really good thought, uh, mindset. Um, I've forgotten the call order, but I think 8-so may be completely safe. But even if it is not completely safe... Say you cut the 8-so and you don't decide to... Re um, so, you, you gave an option of a hard bail, which is perfectly valid in a 10-ho setting when you think, oh god, I really just don't want to come last, this sounds horrible, right? But if 8-so is relatively safe, you leave yourself open to Tsumo. And just like Tsumo Ako, right? So, I think taking the Tenpai and, you know, just pushing forward the 8-so, which is not even really a push, because as you accurately said, an early 7-so makes it very unlikely that it was like a like a seven 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 nine so that cut the seven so because you almost have to like think about safe against the five so but is not safe to the eight so given what i have in my hand as well and you see four seven so so it can't be a seven nine so waiting for an eight so and it could be a shabo but they would have to have both the last eight so's which is possible but not very very likely at all and Aso might even be completely safe because I I just genuinely forgotten if this came before or after the retreat. I think it came uh, before, but I'm not I'm not actually sure. Um, yeah, so I think you take the Dharma Tempai, right? Because you could just draw it yourself, and if you draw any other danger, you can you can uh, fold out. However, I want to talk about um, with you, if that's all right. Um, what would you do if this was a tournament? If so this was a let's tournament? Remove let's, yeah, let's remove the, the super dangerous, you know, if you come last, especially at 6 dawn, this is death for you. Like, let's just get rid of that for now. Imagine this is a tournament. Akaari, 25k start. Akaari, for our imagination, let's, let's, for our imagination, let's say there's Oka. So first place gets a boost. What do you think, then? Let's see, Akaari, 25k starts. The two two so is one five so, which would factor into my decision. I've already passed my first deal, which means that if I get, do get hit, I do have to rely on hoping that my rest of the game goes well for me, but... Mm -hmm. And if this call was after the... If the if the White Dragon call... If either of these calls, really, but especially the White Dragon call because of the... Visible One Mondora were after the Dealer Ricci, that means that somebody probably has... Either a fast... A nice, fast, easily winnable hand or a lot of Dora. Which means it's probably still going to be a bail on my end, just because of how likely it, it, how little Dora I can personally see, and how little of my weight's left. There's only five tiles left in my weight that are visible. There are no threes or fours, which means somebody is probably using the, uh, at least a little bit of the rest, which takes it down to possibly four, uh, three or two tiles left in the wall, even. So, yes, I would probably, um, after taking into account that, yes, there is actually a wall on the sevens that I forgot to notice first. Probably discard the eight and stay Dama, hoping it's Zumo. Um, mm -hmm. But this definitely isn't a Ricci here, because I definitely don't want to get hit by, say, White Dragons, or three, or Dealer, what, anything. In this mm -hmm. situation, especially in a tournament. Yep. Yep. No, I understand what you mean. And um, I can get where you're coming from, but this is actually where I, I'd say um, for, ironically, for the exact reasons that... Um, for the exact reasons of almost ignoring the risks that you've mentioned, not saying that they're not valid risks, but despite those risks, 
um, okay, so how do I phrase this? Um, if you fault, or if you are allowing yourself to fault, you're at negative expected value. And you're at negative expected value because if the deal at sumos, then you lose money. Or if you end up in uh, Ryukyoku, so at the end, yeah, you also have negative money. So folding is generally negative EV. Folding is not necessarily positive EV, but what you're hoping for is either less negative EV or maybe even slightly positive EV. You know that the dealer is not waiting for the 5 so, nor the 2 so. So if they draw it, they will deal it right into you. An 8 so is so safe that you basically get one free draw on top of them. So this is almost a scenario where because 10 ho's fourth penalties are so harsh, you should dama. This is so for 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 full for full um disclosure, I made a reach on the 8 so and I dealt in. That was a completely fair punish because um the force because uh the the I, I let myself have too much exposure, especially in a ten host setting. But in a tournament setting, you can't let people go on rampages ever. Your points matter, right? So in ten ho, your positioning matters, and that's literally all that matters. A thirty-one thousand point first place is equivalent to a one hundred thousand point first place. In a tournament where you actually want to reduce the points you lose, even to sumos, you want to be a bit more aggressive. And this is sort of where I would encourage aggression. Cut the 8 so, reach you, and try to not lose money to Tsumos. Because if you reach you, you, tr you give your hand a chance to win. You give yourself exposure to, to deal in as well. Not, not, not going to lie to you guys and say, you know, you have no exposure or that you'll keep drawing safe tasks. That's just not true. You do leave yourself to, to that exposure. But in a more general tournament setting, you want to minimize your losses on the Tsumo side of things as well. And giving yourself a chance to win off of them is nice. It reduces your sumo loss chance. And even if you just sumo, you get a decent amount of value. This is a two-sided one Dora. And if I was going on before about how one uh, an inside weight one Dora is good, well, a two-sided weight one Dora has to be pretty good as well. It's just a higher variance play. And it's not intuitive to think almost defense by aggression. But this is a case of almost defense by aggression. It's, I'm not going to let this person have a free hand. I'm going to fight them for it. And sometimes I just deal in, because that is my con. My con is, I leave myself unable to change my hand, so I could just deal in. But the pro is, I could stop them from sumoing, or I could sumo myself and give myself more points. So I completely understand where you're coming from. And I'm not going to say that it's wrong, but I feel like in this scenario, you want to prevent the loss of points in a general sense. You don't really care about the placements in... Uh, sorry, not that you don't care about the placements. The placements are not independent of the points. Where points matter a lot. And so then I would say in that case, you should try to go in and reduce your losses in that direction. It's, 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 so this is like a... Like, this is my opinion. And I think this is a, the, the, a discussion of like how your mentality should change between platforms. Ladder Jong, where fourth place is death and you're going to die if you come fourth, takes a back, that takes a backseat if you're in a tournament where you want to play for first and your points actually matter and you want to go for a higher expected value. But uh, thank you. Thank you. That was like really, really good. Thank you so much, Blue. This was the last of the Ricci examples, and I'm hoping that like through the discussion we've had, we talk about how certain pros and certain cons can start overwhelming each other. So in this case, the con of dealing in vastly outweighs the pros on a ladder setting, but perhaps not in a tournament setting, at least in my opinion.